Hi, so there's a very small list of filmmakers whose films are constant sources of inspiration to me. Films I can turn on when in a creative rut and be so impressed by the craft and storytelling that I can't help but feel inspired. And at the top of that list is Wong Kar Wai. He is a filmmaker that has been overanalyzed and has spawned more video essays about his style and individual films than any other filmmaker I've seen. So instead of breaking down his films and adding to that noise, today I would just like to talk about why I personally love them and hopefully get a few more people to discover his films or to rewatch them. So the first Wonka Wai film I watched was Chunking Express and I was completely mesmerized. From the opening shot of Takeshi Kaneshiro running through Chunking Mansions, I knew I was watching something special. There was an energy that I hadn't seen before. And after the film ended, I immediately went online to find out more about it and other films from the director. I can say that Chunking Express is without a doubt one of my favorite films of all time. I think so much of why I love Wong Kar Wai films is because he is able to visualize what is inherently internal. He takes feelings and emotions and splashes them over every inch of the frame. Loneliness, heartache, desire, longing, disconnect. Without words, Wong Kar Wai's films visually convey the internal emotional state of his characters, which is something you rarely see in other films. Take this shot from In the Mood for Love. Even without context, you can tell what both of these characters are thinking about. Each other. Like a lot of directors that I respect and admire, Wong Kar Wai has collaborators that he frequently works with, both in front of and behind the camera. And it's impossible to speak about his films without mentioning two people that stand out, in my opinion, as having the biggest impact and influence on his films. William Chang, who is both his production designer and editor, and Christopher Doyle, the cinematographer on seven of his films, starting with Days of Being Wild, Wong Kar Wai's second feature film. Wong Kar Wai's films owe a lot to the art direction and costume design of William Chang, whose use of colors and textures creates that sensual feeling his films have, like you can reach out and touch them. His costume design helps to make the characters memorable and even iconic in some cases. It's said that films are created three times. The first time is when it is written, the second time is when it is shot, and the last time is when it is edited together. Since William Chang is that editor, he effectively helps to create the final film that we all end up watching. I don't think I need to even speak about Christopher Doyle. It's well known that the collaboration between director and cinematographer is one of the most crucial and important in filmmaking, which is why most directors tend to work with the same cinematographer over the course of their career. I mean, just listen to the rapport that they have. We actually see very monochrome, in, 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 yeah, for, because he's always wearing his sunglasses. I mean, you know, it has a, things seem to kind of dilute you know, the colors of it. Also because I made some mistakes in the printing. So. <laughs> Filmmaking is a collaboration between many people over a long period of time. It's hard to imagine what Wong Kar Wai's films would have looked like had he not worked with Christopher Doyle or William Chang. And to say that his films would have looked and felt the same regardless of who he collaborated with would be doing a disservice not only to Christopher Doyle and William Chang, but to all of the people who worked on his films. Another thing that I love about watching a Wong Kar Wai film is that you can almost feel the filmmakers just outside the edge of the frame. His films straddle the line in a way between fiction and documentary, and that has a lot to do with the way he uses his camera. The seemingly uncontrolled and very reactive way his camera moves, reminiscent of the French New Wave style of cinema, where it looks and feels like the filmmakers grabbed a camera and just started shooting in the streets without permission. Where passers-by curiously look straight into the camera or at the actors, it lends the film an energy that is impossible to replicate in controlled environments like a soundstage. It feels informal, spontaneous, and because of that, authentic. This feeling also owes a lot to Wong Kar Wai's process of making a film, which is essentially not to write a script, but instead experiment on set with the actors, shoot incredible amounts of footage, and then find it in post-production, which is also why he is infamous for always going over budget and missing deadlines on his films. <laughs> What else is there to say? I love his characters. They are upbeat, over the top, memorable. They are entertaining to watch, iconic, funny, ridiculous, just perfect film characters. I love that all of his films at their core are romantic tragedies. 
about people breaking up or wanting to be with someone but not being able to take the first step or taking the first step but just missing each other by seconds, unrequited love, young doomed love or just about characters searching for some form of the most basic of human needs, connection. Another thing that I really like is his use of voiceover, which is both on the nose yet perfect for his style. Voiceover is generally thought of as bad or lazy writing, the argument being that the filmmakers are telling the audience information and not showing it, breaking the golden rule of cinema. But honestly, I'm a big fan of voiceover. A lot of directors I respect use it. I think it can be a great way to give the audience a look inside the head of the characters, as well as I would argue that sometimes telling the audience something can be more powerful than showing them. Like in this clip from Jesse James, when you aren't actually shown the death of Casey Affleck's character, whom you have grown to dislike throughout the course of the film, you are only told it, thereby taking away the satisfaction of seeing him get what he deserves at the end. But Robert Ford would only lay on the floor and look at the ceiling, the light going out of his eyes, before he could find the right words. I can go on and on about his films, touching on his use of music, the use of slow motion and step printing, his obsession with time, his unique approach to editing, but if you had to ask me for any specific reason why I love his films, I wouldn't really be able to give you any. Instead, I would probably sit you down, show you clips of his films, and say this. For me, watching a Wong Kar Wai film is like trying to hold sand. It's incredibly difficult to stop the individual grains from slipping between your fingers, just like it is hard to remember all the individual moments that happen in his films. However, by the end those grains of sand that remain leave a distinct imprint on your hand. Just like at the end of a Wong Kar Wai film, you are left with a feeling of having experienced something quite unique, but not really having any firm idea of what it was you just experienced, or how that experience came to be just an unshakable feeling of having been witness to something quite extraordinary. My name is Brandon, thank you for watching.